the world has come to this. A century-old luxury sports car maker Aston Martin is now making SUVs. And the name is X. DBX, the new family car for Special Agent 007. First, it was Lamborghini who introduced the world's first super SUV, the Urus, followed by the Bentley Bentayga, Rolls-Royce Cullinan, to now this, Aston Martin DBX. It is an SUV world that we lived in because the next to join the party will be Ferrari. However, the DBX is not merely just a product made to join the bandwagon. It is a crucial product that will either make or break the brand due to its current financial crisis. Unlike those made by Volkswagen Group using a shared platform between the Cayenne, Q8, Bentayga and Urus to share the development costs, the DBX is built from ground up with no past experience in making SUVs. It is a new dedicated platform for SUV which is said to be EV ready and just like all other Aston Martin sports cars, it is constructed using bonded aluminium so it is stiff yet light. So, is it any good? Is it worthy of Bourne, James Bourne? For a start, it looks really good in person, not so much in photos though. It looks like a Vantage ran into the back of a DBS Superleggera, which then later on ran into a wall. Very exquisite. It has the largest DB grille ever fitted on an Aston in proportion to the size of the car. They also needed a bigger wing emblem as well, the biggest in fact. This here is a jewellery piece, handcrafted by experts in the Birmingham Jewellery District. The DRL, which is also a signal indicator, has a hole in it. Not like, haha, there's a hole in it. There is a through hole in it to direct air into the wheel arch to cool the brakes. The wheels are 22 inch in size, six port calipers. There is a huge side vent here to relieve the air pressure in the wheel arch. This ornament over here is actually aluminium. Now, check out this glass B pillar. Why? Because Aston Martin. And also because to reduce drag with this seamless piece of glass. What's also unique is the hidden window seals to remove that visual separation between metal and glass. The DBX rides on a triple chamber air suspension system as standard with adjustable ride heights. It can raise up by 45mm or lower by 50mm pretty quickly. This has to be the fastest we have seen so far. Now, take a good long look at the side profile of the DBX because this is where you start to soak it all in and wonder. So, this is Aston's take on an SUV so sleek and slender. The strong powerboat line that runs along the side towards its hip, the sloping roof line, the proportion with short front and rear overhangs. Some would even question, is this even an SUV? Or is it a crossover based off the Vantage? Vantage Cross. Whatever you want to call it, it does look really good, especially from a certain angle. The rear screen is self-cleaning. How? The rear wing here directs air onto the ductile spoiler to create downforce. And while doing that, it sweeps off rainwater or dust at the same time. I'm just not quite sure about bird poo though. <laughs> If you're a vegan, I would advise you to look away because in here it is wrapped entirely with leather. Just how many smurfs they need to kill in order to get all this blue leather. And it smells so good, it is so intoxicating. It's like you're sitting in a Burberry bag. The entire dashboard is leather. The door, including the speaker cover, is leather. I've not seen that before. They say it is to reduce visual clutter. I especially like the one in the middle here. It is a speaker and also air vent at the same time. Even the panoramic roof blind is a piece of Alcantara. That is to match the entire roof lining. And they say it is the industry's first. However, the generous use of luxurious leather is not the only thing you will notice once you enter the cabin. It is the sitting position, which Aston Martin spent months getting it right. This is a sweet spot to be in. Everything just feels right and in place. 
And I know it's weird to say, especially in an SUV, you feel cocooned in here. The steering wheel is not entirely round, very typical Aston Martin. It is nice to hold and it's very sporty as well. The pedal shifters are made out of solid aluminium and feels very expensive. And you get this material throughout the entire car as well. Aston Martin does take their aluminium game seriously. You get it on the door handle, air vent knobs, on the seats, the hanger, and even on the sun visor hinges. The meter cluster is the fully digital 12.3 inch screen and I like it that they actually maintain that opposite direction ref and speedometer design. The glass gear selectors have been moved up here with the engine start button right in the middle. Below it is a 10.25 inch center display with a familiar looking infotainment system from Mercedes-Benz which is why the controls look so familiar as well. It has Apple CarPlay and 360 degree surround view monitor. However, it is not a touch screen. Anyway, the air vents are very slim and sleek in design and those on the side are on a vertical position which is the first for Aston Martin. You get climate control settings over here. Now this is the key slot for you to put your key. I'll get back to you on this one. The center console, you get to select the drive mode here. The standard mode is GT mode. As you move upwards, you get Terrain and Terrain Plus. And you go down from GT, you go to Individual, Sport and Sport Plus. And the air suspension will adjust itself based on the drive mode. Now, of course, you also get a dedicated button to lower the car down for easier ingress and egress. I really like this center console design that looks like it's floating and down there you do get a huge space. Oddly enough though, you actually put your phone down here which I think will create a certain separation anxiety, you know, having your phone so far away from you. But I guess it's good for handbags. Here, as you slide the armrest, you get a cup holders, open it up, you do get a decent space in there. Aston Martin did an excellent job in maximizing cabin space with the longest wheelbase in its class at 3060 mm. That is 70 mm more than the Bentega, even though it is 100 mm shorter in overall length. Together with a huge, I mean huge, panoramic sunroof that comes as standard, letting the light in, you get a spacious and airy cabin space. Ah, yes, I agree to everything I just said. And I like this too. Is it practical? The DBX has the biggest boot space in its class at 632 litres. Enough said. It has a flat boot floor and if you need to lower it, you can just press this button over here and it can lower by 50 millimetres for you to load in heavy stuff or even for your giant poodle to hop in. If you need more space, you can always press this button over here to fold the seats down. But there is a problem though. This cover over here, there's actually no place for you to keep this. So I'll just help you keep it for now. It's a nice laptop table. Let's go through the things I like and don't like about this car. Starting with the things that I like, which is this, Aston Martin's Swan door, where it tilts up a bit to avoid the curb, even for a car at this right height. And you get to see how it works over here is pretty cool. It has got a flat floor for the front passenger and driver, making getting in and out of the car quite easily. Aston Martin is quite quirky in using little DB5 icons on their head unit and also meter cluster, which is quite cute. For an SUV, it actually sounds glorious! To the things that I don't like, the door handle. I know it is uniquely Aston Martin, but don't you think there is like an extra step just to open the door, pressing and pulling, and sometimes you would eventually ruin your manicure. Yeah, true story. For such a luxurious SUV, it doesn't come with soft clothes, which means I will need to slam the door. Everything in this cabin looks really expensive except for this slot over here. It is to place your key but it is made out of really cheap rubber material. Oops. <laughs> uh, okay, never mind. Just when you're about to get comfortable in the back seat, you then realize 
Haha, there's a hole in the armrest. Is it safe, you ask? Since it's an SUV, let's begin our driving segment addressing the safety front. On top of all the usual six airbags, stability control and yada yada, it does come with autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning and lane keep assist, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, traffic sign recognition and automatic high beam. So yeah, it is safe. With that out of the way, now the fun part. 4-litre V8 twin turbo with, for the first time ever, a 9-speed automatic gearbox, both from Mercedes. It makes 550 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. That's more powerful than the Vantage and the DB11 V8. 0 to 100 in just 4.5 seconds. If you leave your foot down, it goes all the way up to 291 kilometers per hour. Impressive figures, but you must be wondering, can it do outdoorsy and off-roady stuff? Well, of course, it has all-wheel drive. You can race the car by 45mm to clear boulders. It has a 500mm wading depth as deep as Mitsubishi Triton pickup truck, hill descent control, and it can tow up to 2.7 tons of load. Now, is it any good to drive? Again, the sitting position is great. It gives you the confidence to handle such a big and fast car. So that is a good start. On GT mode, which is a standard driving mode, this is actually a mild muncher. It is a grand tourer. It can go really fast and very comfortable on the highway, something you would expect from a high-performance SUV like this. It does get off the line very quickly and gracefully at the same time. The power increase is very linear and the gear changes is actually very smooth. When you switch it on to Sport Plus, with a more responsive throttle, rapid gear changes and glorious exhaust note, this thing turns into a different beast altogether. It becomes like a very engaging sports car, lowered down by 30mm, more hunkered down to the road. And at every gear change, it gives you a jolt, just like a pat in the back to say, good job brother, keep that going. <laughs> As compared to the Urus, it is only about 45 kilograms heavier, but it is 150 kilograms lighter than the Bentega. However, you do still feel the 2,245 kilograms of mass. Especially when you're about to enter a big corner and the next thing you expect is a huge body roll. But no, nothing. And you just can keep on going. It just doesn't feel like a huge SUV. How did they do it? The DBX is equipped with a set of powerful 48-volt electronic anti-roll control system that has up to 1,400 Nm of force to reduce the lean on the outer wheels as you take corner, keeping the car as flat as possible around bends. The feeling is actually pretty weird. This is just physics-defying stuff. On top of that, the electronic differential manages its 43 to 57% front to rear torque distribution, making sure you get the right amount of traction on all four wheels. If you're into rubber burning, you can send all 100% of torque to the rear wheels only, giving you a jolly good time. Here comes the big butt, which is not very big. Every time you downshift using the pedal shifters, it doesn't upshift for you automatically. It just gets stuck in manual for the rest of your journey. For example, I downshift now to fifth gear to overtake a car, and it stays in fifth gear for the rest of the time. Why? So, the Aston Martin DBX. Is it a worthy car for James Bond? Yes, it is. It is even worthy for his wife and his family if he ever choose to get married, of course. Well, the actual question should be, is the DBX going to save the brand? Because not even James Bond can save Aston Martin from its financial troubles. The DBX has to sell, and from the looks of it, it shouldn't be difficult. No time to waste DBX, because Aston Martin has no time to die.
So, is this car for you? Well, if you're looking for a luxury SUV that can turn into a sports car just like that, sounds legitly like one too, and physics defying, then yes. But if you're looking for one to be shuffled in because you are just not into driving, then probably not. If you want to find out more about the Aston Martin DBX or the Aston Martin Vantage, do log on to autobus.my. If you like our video, do give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the logo or the subscribe button below. And please remember to turn on the notification bell to receive updates whenever we upload a new video. A quick reminder, if you like our t-shirts, you can get it now at autobus.shop. Do spot us. Thank you. Starting with the things that I like, which is Aston Martis Swan, so Aston Martis. Because this is where, where, why do I talk like that? Everything else, everything in this cabin, everything, ah! it's because this is where you start to, where, what do I do with that? Cut.